morning, everybody. My name is Bernie Gillette. I'm running for Commissioner Post 3. I'm actually seeking re-election. A lot of people always don't know why you decide to run to start off. It's a great question. The reason I decided to run was because of 2 Chronicles 7 portion. I think most of us know that verse. And I knew a lot of people who actually prayed that verse. A lot of Christians feel like the country's not where it should be and we're going the wrong track. So probably for 10 years, I knew Christians would pray that verse, and I myself prayed that verse. And one day, being as I am, I just got a little upset with God and said, God, I just don't understand it. I know there's millions of Christians praying this verse along with myself, and yet I don't see you healing my nation. And no sooner did those words come out of my mouth, and I heard God say, it's as clear as everything. Well, you want to clean up your nation, but you're not willing to clean up your own backyard. And that kind of hurt. I had to get involved. That's the time I started getting involved, and that was probably back around 2007, 2008. And at that time, I got involved, I became a part of the Republican Party in Paul County. I started attending meetings, uh, became a precinct chair, became first vice chair, and before long, I became the uh, chairman of the Republican Party. And after that, I knew God was calling me to do more, and He wanted me to run for Commissioner Post 3. That's not something I really wanted to do. I kind of thought I'm going for a while. But as you know, he usually wins out, he gets his way, and I'd probably rather be in his will than what he wants me to do than be out of his will than what I want to do. So that being said, I'm here seeking a second term because I feel like there's still a lot of things we need to do. Holland County needs a lot more infrastructure to bring in business so that we can relieve the taxes off the tax. Ever since I've been in, one of the main things I've shouted is we've got to have more sewer. Before I got in office, it was amazing that people before me felt it was okay to start an industrial park, and an industrial park had no sewer. Well, sewer is very important when you're talking to businesses and trying to track them down. It's important when you're trying to keep them in the county. We had several businesses who were ready to pack up and leave because they didn't have any sewer. One of those businesses are still here today because I was very instrumental in helping Sunny Man get his sewer. It does have sewer today, and that is a good thing because now those businesses are not leaving the keys to attract more businesses. So when you look at attracting, attracting businesses, there are probably three important things. One is water, two is sewer, and three is fiber optics. And if we as a county and taxpayers want to spend our money, I feel that's where we should spend the money. That's what's going to attract the businesses to the county. That's what's going to help keep the burden of the taxes off the back of the people and own and help the, the companies and commercial retail to help you know, put some of that cost so it's not all on the people. And that's okay. That's the way most places are. Now, we are a veteran community. And there's nothing wrong with being a veteran community, but we do want to optimize that and make as many jobs here that we can get here. We have a lot of people who leave the county to work, but we have a lot of people who come from other counties here to work. That's the way it always is, but we always want to try to optimize it so we keep as many people in the county working here. At least they have that option. There are people who choose to work out of the county, and that's fine too. Another thing is uh, we saved the county a lot of money when we moved the 911 center. When the 911 center was moved to up at the airport, that was the, not the main location. The main location, actually, the first location is where it is now. Tony Crow found that out. He came to me and told me about it, so I started doing some homework. And I found out that it probably would be better suited where it is now. It would be a lot safer there and it would have a lot better access to fiber optics. Where it, was, where it is at the airport, yes, there's fiber optics to the airport, but there was no dedicated lines. I talked to David Muffer and he said you've got to have two dedicated lines for 911 center. So we would have had to run more fiber just to take care of it. And I talked to Scott Green and Scott Green said, hey, the city, the state will not allow us to run more fiber down the 278. I said, well, how do we get there? He said, you're going to have to go heat trail it through back roads all the way to the airport. The next question is, well, what's it going to cost to do that? We started looking into it. Talk to a company out of Rome who does it. does it for a lot of other uh, counties in Georgia. They told me because your county organization, you're probably around 60,000 a, a mile starting off if you hit no rock. They said if you hit rock, it could be up to 150,000 a mile. 
So let's just say it's 60,000 miles. Let's say because you're a peak trail and you have to go 12 to 20 miles. Well, if you went 20 miles, we're talking about $1.4 million. And that's a huge savings that we have spent. Where it is now, we went less than a mile. And it's redundant. We have cable coming in both ways. We have it coming in the east side of the building. So if one side of the cable gets cut, the other side is still there. So that's one way we save the county a lot of money. That was a good thing that we did. Sewer at Land. I'll go back to that for a second because that's a good thing. We need more sewer. There's a couple projects we're looking at now on 92, also over in the Greek Road area. Hopefully, we can work those out. But we're going to attract some business. And like I said, I'm always, always big on the sewer. If, if uh, I get reelected, one thing I really want to do is focus more on the homestead exemption. We have one of the lowest homestead exemptions around. I wanted to do this before, but when you put it to the math, the math just didn't work out. As we get more business in, and where the where the uh, millage rate is now, that's something we can take another look at, and hopefully we can raise the homestead exemption again. That's going to help take taxes off of the backs of the people, and and put it, you know, let, let the, uh, businesses pick up a little bit more of that tax load. Other than that, I, I always want to keep the government as transparent as I can. I always answer questions. I try to always return every phone call. Still, the number one complaint to get as a commissioner is roads. Believe it or not, people still have potholes, uh, things on the side of the roads, and we always want to help and take care of that, too. I think we have a, a very good department that does handle that. We're doing a lot of restructuring. That's been very positive. I think the bringing Frank Baker on the position that he's been brought into, it's, it's just been a really big step for the county and really helping the county out. And with that, I, I'll go ahead and open up the question. Mr. Yes. Collette, you just said, you know, that those people that choose to leave the county to go to work, okay, yes. why are they choosing to do that? Lots of times it's their decision, okay? When I moved to, oh yes ma'am, when I moved to Pauley County, okay? I personally moved to Pauley County 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was working in Swan. Okay. I just try to find a job. I like my job in Swan. I moved to Pauley County. I wanted to live in Pauley County. Every day when I came home, I saw a beer on the way home. I enjoyed that. I like Pauley County. I like living out here. And I did not even try to change. I decided that I was going to keep my job in Swan and still drive back and forth. And that meant sometimes two hour trip home. Okay. An hour trip in the morning. That was my decision, something I chose to do. And I have a lot of people who told me the same thing. Mm -hmm. But like you say, and I agree with you, the people that don't want to do that should have better options. And that's where we need to attract more business to do that. To attract that business, we are going to have to have a lot more sewer and infrastructure that this county has. Okay. Next question. I have a question. You, you keep talking about sewage, and we have to have the sewer to attract businesses. But the infrastructure is set up in the Northeast Corridor area, which also affects the top of the Citrus Corridor and all. And I don't understand why, if you've got this already in place, why you're not trying to get industry to come in and find the areas and that. And there's a wonderful place up there that we're going to build houses on it, but would be a great industrial park where the soccer field is. I don't understand why industry, you know, everybody gets all excited when there's a new little restaurant open which is fine. I mean, it helps. But we need major, major industry. And, and there's just no, everybody's trying to focus on getting the sewage down in the area around Highland and not where it's wide open up there. And yeah, that's the other, other question I have about that is um, there was a big, you know, a lot of questions about building houses and nature's wall. And I have a question as to why that was such an emphasis on making that look like it was a bad thing, which it wasn't, and then turn around and not do anything about some of the other building that was going on. It was, it was very much a political poise, what I saw. And then along with that, um, there was a promise that the little church would get water. And the guy that was building Nature Wall had already said that he would let uh, the church come up to the subdivision and get their water. And then, of course, we now have a moratorium, which is another, I think, political um, boy, boy. 
just to help you get people elected, because it wasn't important up until this year. So my question is, first about industry, and then why about the water? You know, why did they do, if it was such a big deal, and people kept saying, let's have the water in the church, and then all of a sudden they had a way to do it, and then it got yanked. Yeah. Two great questions. Uh, why industry up in that in the county? I have no problem with that, and I will support that. But you know, you don't put industry where you want industry to go. So last time industry has a say so. But there are three, there's an industrial parks in the city empty that don't have industry in it. And why right, which, which industrial park are we talking the, about? The, there's, there's three of them in the county. And right. one, like the over in the government complex. Now, the, that, that has got basic industry, or you have to share the department and things like that. But I'm talking about major industry. The one on 278. You're talking about the Alice, right? The Alice. And then uh, Dallas, also Dallas, Dallas, is a Dallas is a good question. The Dallas uh, Industrial Park. The Dallas Industrial Park was really built to be housing. With housing, you don't have to have a good foundation. Really, and truly, that's too never been industrial park. We just take some companies out there and they see how much rocks out here. They don't want to go there, which is part of the problem up north, too. You have to understand when a company's looking at foundation for a business, if you're talking about big industry, they have a large footprint. That's expensive when you start moving rock. So they want to come to hire them when they know, hey, it's already flat. I don't have to do a lot of grading. And my footprint or my foundation is going to be easier and cheaper, OK? It's not going to, be as, it's going to cost as much. The first time I ran, I had a lady come up to me and she said, Mr. Platt, we need a Kia plant in home. And I thought that would be great. I wish we could have a Kia plant in home. But the reality is we'll probably never have a Kia plant in home. Have you been down to the Kia plant? It's probably a mile long, isn't it? When you take all the subsidiaries with it. We don't have a mile of black land anywhere around here. You're not going to have, we're talking the industry into spending $30 million just to pray before they can even come out of the ground. So we have to first realize what industries we can attract. Our, the best thing we can go after these 50 to 100 employee industries. That's where we need to focus. We have a wonderful IBA with Robert Krauss now leading it. He's doing a good job. And have a wonderful EBO with Robert Krauss. But where are, the other, where are those industries? Even with 100, you know, we've been talking industry in this county for ever since I've been here for almost 28 okay. years. But those, you're not attracting those. Well, well, let's, let's talk about the reality right now, okay? Robert Randall's another good guy. They're working hard, but they've got a lot going on. A lot of things you can't talk about. There's one industry looking at coming here, looking at spending 10 million just on a facility. Okay? This is going to be off 92 if they decide to do it. Because why? Because it's going to be a little bit cheaper. Where are those industries right now? Where have they been throughout the whole last 10 years? We came through a recession. And we know that housing leads commercial and retail. We are just now starting seeing re uh, housing come back. You are not going to see commercial come back until after you know housing is going real well. We're close to seeing commercial come back. Most companies have been downsizing for the last 10 years, cutting employees, trying to save money. Most companies have trillions, very, if it's a Fortune 500 company, they may have millions or even trillions of dollars offshore. They will not bring it back because of the high taxes. They, it's better for them to leave it there than it is to bring it back and pay 39% in taxes. With this new tax bill that passed, though, that's a good sign. Because you heard the day that it passed, Walmart, Verizon, and other companies announced they're just going to give their, their uh, employees a $1,000 bonus just because the tax bill passed. That's because they know they got all this money sitting offshore, and they understand that. And they said, now we can bring it back. It's going to be a lot cheaper. It's probably going to be at 19 or 20% to bring it back now. They'll pay that to bring it back. When they start bringing all this money back, that's going to help the economy, and you're going to see a lot of growth. You're going to see these companies wanting to expand. I think we are positioned in a good place to attract all these companies. Like I said, we've got a lot of stuff we're talking about. I've got two big uh, things going on in, in my post alone that could be just huge. Uh, Greystone's looking at uh, moving everything over here. They hadn't wanted to do that. They're just now at the point where they're ready to talk about doing that. And it's all based on the economy, and you have to wait. You have to follow what's going on. Once we see housing come back, which we are seeing it come back now, then we can see industry. Okay. Uh, what's the second part of the question? Was the water? <coughs> the first time I heard.
heard him think about water that the church could go in there and do it. Uh, that's a nice gesture. I'm sure it is. I don't know if they have a way to get water. You're talking about what, probably hundreds of gallons. From what I understand, their well is one run dry, and they have to actually haul water in and fill that well up. Okay, but I don't know if they have the, the means to do that or not. But the county can't do it for them. So I don't know. So you know, we need, like I said, the three things we need to do, and I'll end it on that: is infrastructure is important, water is important. We need to make more sure that more citizens have water availability to water. Uh, wells are one front and drive the county. We also need a lot more sewer for industry and we need uh, fiber optics for those industries too. Okay. Thank you so much. One quick question real quick. Yeah. Uh, it's, up to, it's, up to, it's up to you. It's up to you. You talk about the economic development board. Um, when I first opened up my business here in Baldwin uh, nearly two and a half years ago, I started reaching out to them. Last week was the first time that somebody actually picked up the phone and I still haven't received a phone call back and other questions that I have. Um, with the amount of money that the county is paying them, what are they doing? Okay, that's, that's a good question, fair question. When Robert first got on board here, he took a look at things and Robert knows what he's doing. He's the guy that was in Douglas County. He brought the Red Cross to Douglas County. He brought Google to Douglas County. He brought fiber optics to Douglas County in a way that the EDO owns and makes money off those fiber optics so they become self-sufficient. Everywhere he's gone, check out his record, he has done real well and made EDO and Economic Development Organization self-sufficient, which is the best thing that could happen to a county. The one reason he couldn't do it here when he first got here, you had three industries or three entities, I should say, trying to take the lead road. We had the IBA who was trying to go out and track business. We had um, EDO is trying to go out and track business. We have a chamber who's going out and track business. You can't do that. When Robert first got here, there was an offshore company, a big company, who still got Paul in there, but because of the economy, they're not ready to move. They said, the economy's not ready yet. We're not ready to make this commitment yet because the economy's not there yet. But still, it's going to be a, a company from Europe coming here. I've met with them. I've talked to them. Uh, they were very interested in, in coming here, too. But, uh, Can you guys email each other? Um, we will. You've got last one. Okay. Yeah, what I just want to say real quick is that um, they, uh, guys, you know, I can't You're good. Talk? We'll talk, okay? But I'll get to you. Thank you. That answer anybody else who wants to do it, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you.